you need to install a Purifine or Mini Rack ultraviolet disinfection system to make sure the well or lake water at your home cottage or cabin is safe and bacteria free. But you've never installed one of these before and you're not really sure where it goes, how it goes, how it's connected up to your plumbing. Is this something you can really do by yourself? Relax. I'm going to explain the whole process to you step by step starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how and where to install one of these Purifine or Mini Rack UV systems to make sure they work perfectly and are super easy to maintain. And by the way, if you're not 100% sure how one of these ultraviolet disinfection systems work, I've got a great YouTube video that explains the whole process. I'll put a link in the description down below. One of the things you need to keep in mind before installing one of these ultraviolet disinfection systems is pretreatment. In other words, that the water coming into this system has to be clear, has to be colorless, has to be soft, and has to have an iron content less than 0.3 parts per million and have a UVT or an ultraviolet transmittance percentage of 100%. And of course, you need a five micron sediment pre-filter and a carbon filter. And by the way, PureFinder makes UV systems for a number of different companies, including Water Depot. But if your UV system looks like this one here, then the installation is identical. Another thing to keep in mind is where this ultraviolet disinfection system actually gets installed. So it gets installed after all your other water filtration equipment. After the water softener, iron filter, tannin filter, whatever else you have, then it goes through the UV light, then it splits into hot and cold for your home cottage or cabin. So to prepare, you need to keep a few things in mind. First of all, that needs to be installed indoors. I also highly recommend that the ballast gets installed somewhere where it's not below some pipes that could drip condensation onto the ballast. You need to check on the direction of flow. So water has to flow in this side and flow out that side. So you need to keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that you have a surge suppressor. So the ballast needs to be plugged into a surge suppressor to protect it from brownouts and power fluctuations. And when choosing an install location, keep in mind that the UV lamp gets changed out of this side here. So you need to leave an extra 20 inches of space beside the UV to make sure that you facilitate that in the future. So when you remove one of these from the box, you'll notice there's two main components. There's the manifold with the two filter housings and the reaction chamber itself. And you'll notice they come with two instruction books, neither one of which is for the whole system. One is just for the UV part and the other is for the manifold part. So we'll just kind of toss those aside. All right, so in this particular situation, we're gonna have the water flowing in through this side. It's gonna be going through the UV chamber itself and then flowing out through the same side. If in your situation, it's in line. In other words, it flows in through this side and you need it to go this way, then what you can do is take the plumbing and run it back through in this direction over here. And of course, the whole installation could be done with copper pipe that you solder together. But for those of you that don't know how to solder, this installation can be done totally solder free and that's the way I'm going to show you. So the first step is to securely fasten the manifold onto a piece of wood. So I've got a two by six here, but you can just run that two by four. Make sure that you securely fasten that two by four to two studs to hold it in place. Now in situations where you don't know the maximum flow rate of your water supply, you'll need to put in a flow restrictor because this system is only good for eight gallon per minute flow rate. So for this particular installation, we're going to be using three quarter inch copper plumbing. And you can see that we've got uh, pieces of threaded pipe here. So we're going to use some Teflon tape. Now, of course, this can all be done in X, but there are certain portions of it that need to be done in copper before you switch to PEX. But as soon as I get to that, I'll show you how. All right. So we run three turns of Teflon tape on the threaded portion, then hold it in place, snap it off. Once you've got the Teflon tape on, now every connection is going to be exactly the same. I'm just going to show you this one, but the next thing you're going to use is some pipe dope. Yes, you're going to use Teflon tape and pipe dope on every connection, every threaded one. You just put the pipe dope around there. And now, so this has a bushing because the inlet side on this is one inch, but it does come with this bushing that reduces it down to three quarters of an inch. Tighten that up on there. So again, you would do the same on this uh, thread here, but like I say, I just showed you the first one and then we run it inside. And as you can see that I've got a ball valve here before it, and then you tighten that up. And again, you do the same thing on the outlet side. Again, you'd have the, there's Teflon tape on here and you'd have pipe dope. And you wanna make sure this end here is fairly, fairly vertical. Next, you grab the chamber itself. Now, what I suggest with the chamber, you're gonna to wanna to be careful of the inlet and the outlet. So the side that's open 
And the side that has the grounding bolt here is going to be go on this side, the same side that's the outlet from the manifold, but the inlet from the UV chamber itself. And you can see it's already uh, has Teflon tape that they've applied from the factory. So at the other end is where you're going to have the outlet side. Now on the other end, you need to be careful, especially if you're using PEX, you need to put a light dam on here. So the easiest way to do a light dam is with one of these elbows. And again, you would put Teflon tape on there and of course pipe dope. And then I found it's easier to pre-assemble this before you put it onto the manifold itself. And then of course, you know, like I say, you would have Teflon tape and pipe dope on there and you'd make it super tight, right? And then you just line this up over here, press that down, that snaps in. And then you can tighten this up. And as always, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And again, you would make that very tight. And then on the opposite side here, then you can see that's the outlet. So from the outlet, so after you've put in that light dam, that elbow, then you can switch over to PEX if you like, or you can continue on with copper. All right, the next step is we need to put the sleeve inside the reaction chamber. So to, to do that, you need to remove the, the knurled ends on either end. And just be careful you don't mix these up because this one's closed and this one's open. So this is the end that you're gonna be feeding the lamp in from. Then we grab the sleeve. And don't drop it, whatever you do. So next you wanna grab the quartz sleeve. Now be very careful with it. These are very fragile. And you also need to make sure that you only handle it either by wearing gloves or by a cloth like I have here. So you feed it in. So there's a closed end and an open end. You wanna feed it in with the closed end first. And again, you can touch the very ends if you like with your bare hands but not the, the middle of the sleeve itself. And then now, this is the part that I don't like about this system. And that is it says to leave an inch protruding on each end before you put on the O-rings. Well, what you're gonna quickly find is that there isn't an inch to protrude on each end. In fact, you're lucky if it's half an inch that protrudes. What you can do is you can dip the O-rings in a little bit of water and that'll make them slide a little bit more easily. But whatever you do, don't use plumber's clear silicone grease on these. Once the water, the pressure is in here, it can actually move that sleeve around and it can actually pop down to a point where it actually water shoots out of the end. So whatever you do, don't use plumber's clear silicone grease. And then we've got the two uh, knurled ends here. So the closed one goes on the closed end. And these you only tighten hand tight. And the open one goes on the end where you're gonna put the lamp into. And again, you tighten them hand tight. So what I normally do, because these ones are so finicky, you have to get them exactly the right spot for them not to leak, is I tighten one side a fair amount and tighten the other side a fair amount and then tighten the other side even further until you've got both ends tight. Tighten them both the same so you're centering that sleeve in there. But again, you don't use any tools, just hand tight. And then we grab the lamp. So on the end of the lamp, you can see that there's four pins and they're two different distances apart based on the two rows. So if, if the cap doesn't quite fit on, it just slides straight on, you just turn it 90 degrees. So then grabbing the lamp, again, using the cloth, you feed it in from the end. Now you need to install the ballast. You always have to be careful to install the ballast somewhere where there's not a pipe above it that when there's condensation could drip onto the ballast. So I always find to keep a, a piece of wood just slightly above. So you put one screw in for one end and then we grab another screw for the other end. And we line it up and tighten it up there and tighten up the other side just to hold it in place. All right, there we go. Now the electrical connection will go on this end here. So the next step is to undo the nut for the ground. Set it up here so we don't lose it. And attach this for the ground. And you can tighten that up. So then we can see that there's two rows here, the receptacles for the pins. So we line those up and we push it straight on. Make sure it goes all the way home and then slide it in. Tighten the, the bolt on the side here to hold it in place. And then we can grab the power cord, slide it into the end of the ballast. 
and the other end we're going to plug into our surge suppressor, but just not yet. So this UV system doesn't come with the filters pre-installed. So you're going to need to have a sediment filter and a carbon filter. So for a sediment filter, they recommend a 5 micron sediment filter, but I recommend a 5005 like this one here. So it's 50 microns on the outside, 5 microns on the inside, so it totally satisfies that, but it gives you a longer filter life because the outside is going to catch the larger dirt particles before they get to the inside, to the 5 micron part, to clog it. Then the next step is the carbon filter. So you can go with a basic carbon filter like this, it'll work just fine, or you can go with one like this, which is 0.5 micron nominal filtration, and in, in addition to filtering out the chemicals out of your water, it also gets rid of VOCs, volatile organic compounds, and cis reduction. So then all we do is open up the filter housings, and again, lefty loosey righty tighty. Screw that. Open it up. And then we take the filter cartridge. I mean, obviously you'd unwrap it, you'd pop it inside here. And uh, now this is already pre-lubricated with a uh, plumber's clear silicone grease, and that's great. Put that inside. And tighten it up. And when with the filter housing wrench, just give it just a little bit more, just so it doesn't leak. And we do the same thing with the carbon filter side. So next we make sure both valves are shut off. And then we want to turn the power on to the ultraviolet light. So again, we take the power cord and we plug that into the surge suppressor, turn the surge suppressor on, and you can see it displays 365. So what it's going to be doing is tomorrow it's going to display 364. It's counting down the days to when you need to replace that lamp because the lamp is good for 365 days of use. Next step would be you open up the valve. Now you've got water pouring in and you open, only open it up about halfway until the whole system fills with water. Once it's filled with water and you don't see any leaks, you'll see the gauges go up to register the, the pressure of the water that's coming in. You can open up all the way. Again, check for leaks. If you don't have any leaks, the next step is you have to disinfect. So this is gonna kill any bacteria of the water that flows through it, but any water that's downstream of the system, it's not gonna kill. So what you need to do, remove this filter and this filter housing, put chlorine in here, bleach basically, about half full unscented bleach, and then run that out throughout the whole house. Now, I've got a great YouTube video that explains to you exactly how to do that disinfection process. And again, I'll put a link in the description down below. Once you've got the chlorine in there, then you can open up the outlet. And like I say, run it throughout the whole house and disinfect. Once you finish that disinfection, then what you'll do is shut off the water, run a faucet somewhere in the house to, uh, to reduce the pressure in the system. Once it's been depressurized, close the, the outlet valve, Unscrew this filter housing, dump out that chlorine, put your carbon filter back in, tighten it back up. Again, open it up halfway to start filling up with water. Once everything is set, open it up all the way, open up the outlet. And if you're looking for more information about this Purifinder Mini Rack Ultraviolet Disinfection Systems, you can go to our websites, either watereastore.ca in Canada, watereastore.com in the US. We offer free shipping and discount price. Click up here for your next video on ultraviolet disinfection and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below.